Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. The chip industry has developed for so many years and has become a global industrial chain. The United States has advantages in chip design, Japan has advantages in equipment and materials, South Korea has advantages in memory chips, China has advantages in chip manufacturing, and the mainland provides the world's largest market. However, the United States insists on breaking this balance and imposing chip restrictions on China. Then there is only independent breakthrough and gradually solve various problems. Recently, chip architecture giants have stopped to build cores and the market may reverse. The opportunity for China chips is here. The semiconductor industry chain is very complex. Simply put, it includes three links, upstream industry foundation, midstream chip manufacturing, and downstream market applications. The United States imposes chip restrictions mainly because the upstream link has advantages, and the midstream depends on the upstream. The upstream link includes IP architecture, EDA software, equipment and materials, etc. The midstream link generally includes three aspects, design, manufacturing, and packaging and testing. Design is inseparable from IP architecture, and EDA software, and manufacturing and packaging, and testing are inseparable from equipment and materials. The downstream link is mainly the application of chips, such as the semiconductor market in mainland China, which processes and sells chips. To achieve chip independence, the key point is to break through the upstream and midstream links. Although China is relatively backward in terms of chips as a whole, fortunately, every link is working hard to advance. The progress in the middle reaches is still relatively fast, and the biggest gap is still in the upper reaches. In terms of packaging and testing, the degree of localization is the largest, and the three giants of packaging and testing, Changjin Technology, Tengfu Microelectronics, and Huqian Technology, rushed into the top 10 in the world. In terms of manufacturing, SMIC, Huahong Group, and Jingha Integrated have also entered the top 10 global OEMs. In terms of design, Huawei High Silicon's chip design level has reached the world's leading level first, and Ziguang Zhanrui is also good. Many aspects of the upstream link have also made progress, but there is still a big gap compared with foreign levels. For example, SMIC wants to develop advanced manufacturing, but ASML's EUV lithography machine is restricted in shipments, and Shanghai Microelectronics can only achieve a maximum of 90 nanometers. In terms of EDA software, Huawei recently announced that it has broken through the localization below 14 nanometers, but the following processes still need to continue to work hard. The most fundamental thing is the IP architecture which is the basis of chip design and is more important than EDA software. However, the two mainstream architectures in the world are currently in the hands of foreign companies, and the x86 architecture used for PCs and servers belongs to the US company Intel. Another mainstream architecture is ARM, launched by the British ARM company. This structure is ill-fated. It was originally a major advantage of the British chip industry, because ARM's neutral authorization model quickly occupied the global mobile chip market. At present, 
More than 95% of the world's mobile chips use the ARM architecture, such as Apple, Huawei, Samsung, Qualcomm, and MediaTek. But even so, because the authorization fee of ARM was not high at the beginning, the revenue was only more than 1 billion US dollars. So ARM was sold to Japan's SoftBank and later wanted to sell it to NVIDIA for $40 billion, but it ended in failure. However, Sun Jingyi of SoftBank plans to promote the listing of ARM. In order to increase the valuation of ARM, he began to think about improving its revenue capability. Some time ago, ARM wanted to change the original authorization model in order to obtain greater benefits. I just don't want to be limited to collecting authorization fees from chip designers, but also want to charge a certain fee from mobile terminals in proportion. Recently, the British media Financial Times reported that ARM has decided to make chips in person, that is, to design chips by itself and directly hand them over to TSMC, Samsung, etc. to manufacture chips in order to seek new customers and strive for greater sources of profit. ARM's move has aroused concern in the chip industry because it uses its own architecture to naturally design a good enough chip which will compete with authorized customers such as Qualcomm, MediaTek, and Samsung and directly become competitors with customers. In this case, the market may reverse, causing some ARM customers to abandon ARM and switch to the huge potential and fast-growing RISC-V architecture. The RISC-V architecture is promoted by Ali, Huawei, etc., and Chinese companies have basically achieved dominance. Today, both actions of ARM may push customers away directly, so more customers will choose RISC-V. ARM's entry into the core manufacturing industry is just like Samsung's. Previously, Apple's mobile phone chips were manufactured by Samsung, but Samsung also has a mobile phone business and its own chips. This made Apple very worried so it later switched to TSMC. If ARM aggressively builds cores, it will naturally be abandoned by customers, and the free and powerful RISC-V has become the first choice. In fact, Intel, Qualcomm, etc. have already laid out the layout, and ARM will only let them increase their efforts, so that RISC-V will develop faster. ARM core making may bring opportunities to China core. In this regard, some foreign media said, China chips opportunity is coming.